Today is the 7th of March 2019, day 21 of GHV Airfield Savers. Okay, I think that worked very, very well. Welcome to this edition of me having a go at Le Modèle. So my job for this morning or afternoon or evening or whatever time of day it is in your part of the world is to use the grey primer acrylic spray and continue the job where we left off before where we ran out of primer and I'm just going to paint it grey and then there's nothing else for me to do for a few minutes so I'm going to um, regale you with the story of how I became a helicopter pilot no no it's, it's, it's something like that anyway ready here we go form resistance I can't read the instructions they're far too small Da -da -da -da. Oh, I missed. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh. Don't want to waste the paint. It's such a shame to waste my time here paint <coughs> painting this yellow frame grey so that later I can paint it yellow again. You know, Julian's not here, so I can talk about him in his absence. And I'd like to say, that's bonkers, Julian. Taking a yellow frame, painting it grey, <laughs> so that later we can precision paint it yellow again and perhaps fail. I know actually that I'm being really cheeky and in fact Julian is not three feet away. But I just wanted to tell my truth. That's it, I'm telling my truth. And I know there's a really good reason why we're doing this. I know there's a really good reason. I just don't know what it is. And I don't actually know what I'm supposed to paint the back as well. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, I do, I do. See, this has got the back painted. Wow, that's lucky. Oh, it does smell bad. I'm glad he has a, you know. Um, I was going to say transistor radio. I'm trying desperately to think of the right word. It's the fan thing. It clears the kitchen. Isn't it hard to multitask? To actually talk and spray and paint at the same time. There's no such thing as multitasking. It's actually time division multiple access. Ask me about it later. Ooh. And um, women and men do it differently. We can all actually multitask in that time division multiple access way. Men do it in a slightly more linear way. And women do it more in a matrix. I bet you're interested in that, but I bet there's a few nodders. I bet you're nodding. One of the, um, one of the critiques I received in my flying training when I was learning to fly the Hawk from a squadron commander who shall remain nameless because he doesn't deserve to be given a name. He didn't like me. He didn't like having women going through the fast jet flying training system and his critique was she flies like a woman and you have to ask yourself what does that mean it was clearly not a compliment because I knew he didn't like me but also it was probably quite accurate despite the fact that I could do the same sorts of things I'm pretty confident I probably didn't do all the same things in quite the same way you know you can go to infinite very very quickly and still get the same job done Anyway, the point is, very briefly, what I wanted to say was, when I first learned to fly a helicopter, it was a gazelle. Oh, I'm so lucky. But because I'd come at it from a fixed wing background, I was steeped in not stalling. If you fly a fixed wing aircraft, the most important thing to do with it really is to not stall. A stall is a very subtle, very easy to do and lethal maneuver. It's so easy. So many more aircraft have met their demise through stall than probably any other um, incident. So in the helicopter, first of all, you're taught to hover. And that's a tricky thing because you're in three planes all the time. But most of us baby pilots are okay. If the aircraft drifts backwards, then it's just natural to pull forwards a little bit, correct the error. And if the aircraft drifts to the left, it's just natural to correct to the right. But if the aircraft drifts forwards, you see, you have to pull back on the stick and it does tilt 
and all of us fixed wing pilots didn't want to pull back too much on the stick. Even though we were relatively stationary, there is something built in, once you've got a few hours under your belt, of not pulling back on the stick close to the ground. Uh, so we never pull back enough to stop the helicopter from creeping forwards. And you could see all the baby pilots all around the airfield, all those who'd got fixed wing background, the creep would develop. We just wouldn't pull back and correct enough and so the helicopter would gradually accelerate forwards until it reaches what's called a flying configuration. It gets to a speed where you actually have to get it all born, come around the circuit, come down and start the process again. I'm not going to tell you any more right now. I'll go on about hovering another time. It's the single most fun thing you can do in a helicopter. Probably the most fun thing you can do in a fixed wing is aerobatics, maybe close formation, close second, but in a helicopter, the helicopter is born to hover. You can literally just get off the ground six inches and you're in a full flying configuration and you can go, I just want to drift over there. You can't do that in a fixed wing. I just want to drift over there. I'll just rest one skid on this mound. It's just so much fun. So I'm very happy to be doing this. Last message about this that Julian mentioned before I began is that actually um, the uh, air ambulance is now using a souped up version of this rescue helicopter and he tells me it has a fenestron which I'm very attached to because the gazelle has a fenestron so maybe he was suggesting we could cobble something together and see if we can make these models more representative of that which the um, of that that the, the rescue service is actually using at the moment but we'll see I don't know I'm a complete amateur in this field I'm going to hand over my expertise to Julian, but I hope you've enjoyed the hard work I've done here. I hope he approves of my work. I can still see faint shades of yellow here. I, I don't think he's going to like it, but they are onwards and upwards.